I will be showing you how to go from this to this. I will be comparing and benchmarking each major setting for graphics and performance differences so you can better optimize the game for your system. And I will be giving you my optimized settings as well. Let's start with the CPU performance. Using CPU limited settings, the R5 3600X without ray tracing achieves an average of around 60 FPS while running around a heavily populated part of the city and the 1% lows dipped to as low as 40 FPS. This is kind of impressive considering the amount of things going on and the immediately noticeable increase in the number of pedestrians and vehicles compared to the first game. Using ray tracing, however, CPU performance becomes crippled, even more so than I would have expected, lowering the average frame rate to just over 30 FPS with lots of dips into the low 20s for the 1% lows. So, my advice is keep ray tracing turned off if you are targeting higher frame rates. Now let's get into the settings, starting with upscaling. Going from native TAA to IGTI Ultra Quality looks much worse, don't use it. XESS Ultra Quality looks very clean here. FSR 3.1 Quality has some trouble dealing with the buildings. And DLSS Quality looks similar to XESS in how clean it looks. But Comparing stills is only half the process. Now let's compare moving objects at half speed and see what issues come up. Native TAA looks relatively clean and without any obvious issues. IGTI Ultra Quality suffers from noticeable trailing. XESS Ultra Quality suffers from fizzling behind moving objects and what appears to be some type of flashing square artifacts. And this happened a lot. FSR 3.1 quality has the most noticeable ghosting and trailing issues so far, lasting for many frames. It looks absolutely terrible. DLSS quality looks the cleanest to no one's surprise, which is why it's my recommended setting for upscaling. Otherwise, you're stuck picking any other upscaler with noticeable visual issues. For texture quality, it gradually increases texture resolution and VRAM consumption with each option, while very high has the least noticeable improvement. So, if you're limited on VRAM, dropping it to high won't look so bad. Texture filtering is straightforward here. Use 16x for the best image quality, especially with this game, since you'll be spending a lot of your time looking at weird angles. As for shadow quality, as far as I could tell, it doesn't affect shadow resolution, just shadow filtering, which might also indicate why there is a very small performance difference between the options. It looks like high, very high, and ultra, perform about the same, but I recommend using high to be on the safe side. For ambient occlusion, Using SSAO is your basic and performant choice, while the difference between HBAO Plus and XEGTAO is very noticeable, in that XEGTAO is very accurate and looks much better, but it does have a small performance impact, which is why I recommend using SSAO to gain a couple of frames. The screen space reflections are very basic in this game, since it was designed to use ray traced reflections as a baseline for the PS5. But in my testing across many different scenes, it looks like there is no noticeable difference in image quality or performance between low and high. So any of the two options are fine. 
and speaking of ray traced reflections, they look absolutely beautiful and are a great improvement, especially in this game, since there are a lot of reflective surfaces in the environment. But as expected, the performance impact is very hard on the system, so you will have to think really hard if it's worth it or not for you. But my recommendation is to keep it disabled for the best performance. The ray traced interior setting is a new and somewhat innovative technique for a ray traced setting, but I found that it didn't really add much to the game's environment as the base interiors already look really good. Turning this feature on just drops performance for no real good return. The ray traced shadows in this game are, in my opinion, inferior to the base rasterized shadows just like the first game, since their quality with the default denoiser look absolutely atrocious, and the base shadows already look really good. Not to forget that they now have a very short and limited view distance. This setting shouldn't have been implemented just for the sake of ray tracing, as they already have other meaningful ray traced effects in use. Keep this one turned off for the best image quality and performance. The ray traced ambient occlusion honestly just looks less subtle and without the edge bleed, and that's while comparing them side by side. In actual gameplay, you'd be hard pressed to tell the difference. Keep it turned off for better performance. The ray tracing geometry detail setting affects the quality of the geometry in ray traced effect, mostly noticeable on ray traced reflections, and it comes with a big performance impact, and that with ray traced reflections already turned on. The ray tracing object range setting controls the view distance on ray traced effects, such as shadows and reflections, and it noticeably affects performance, especially CPU performance which is why I recommend turning this setting down if you are being CPU limited when using ray tracing. A value of 5 or 6 should be a good balance. Turning DLSS ray reconstruction on is a no-brainer if your GPU supports it, as it really improves image quality in a lot of areas. However, while the transformer model sure does look a bit better, it can significantly lower performance on the RTX 3000 and 2000 series GPUs. So if you have an RTX 4000 series GPU or newer, the performance impact will be much lower than shown here. Test this out on your own system and decide for yourself, assuming you're already using ray tracing. The level of detail setting is very impactful to both image quality and performance. Only on medium and above does it start looking acceptable, since it controls the majority of objects on screen. Lower options are meant for very weak and outdated hardware, and should be avoided at all costs. My minimum recommended option for level of detail is medium, and use high only if you have spare performance. This setting also affects CPU performance heavily, so if you are CPU limited, lowering the setting should help you gain a few more frames. The traffic density setting doesn't necessarily control traffic density, but traffic distance visibility, as each option gradually and minimally increases the maximum distance traffic is visible. And performance wise, when both GPU and CPU limited, it barely affects performance. 
so I recommend high as the optimized setting. The crowd density setting is straightforward and gradually increases the amount of NPCs that can be seen at once. This setting affects CPU performance noticeably, so lower the setting if you are CPU limited. My recommended setting is medium and only increase this setting if you have spare performance. The hair quality setting affects main character's hairs and can noticeably lower performance when in view. My recommended setting is medium and use high if you have spare performance. The weather particle quality setting is basically a fancy name for volumetric cloud quality and it can significantly decrease performance on higher options. Therefore, my recommended setting is medium. The depth of field setting mainly affects cutscenes and each option gradually increases the intensity and quality of depth of field. However, going from medium to high starts to apply depth of field in-game and the performance impact is very small. But if you are noticing that performance drops for a brief moment when swinging through foliage or trees, then turning down this setting to medium might just help in those scenarios. I would like to officially announce that I just launched a Patreon for those of you who would like to support the channel directly. And if you enjoy my content and want to help me keep making more, you can check it out at patreon.com slash psychopath. Of course, just watching, liking, and sharing my videos already means the world to me. But if you would like to go the extra mile, Patreon is a great way to do so. It will allow me to cover more games and hopefully upgrade my gear to deliver videos faster. Thanks for being awesome. Now for the performance. The game using max settings and ray tracing is incredibly demanding. It becomes a slideshow at times. Turning off ray tracing, the game is still very demanding. But at least it's now somewhat playable. And I say somewhat because performance still dips below 30 FPS at times. And using the optimized settings while still at native nets us an okay increase in frame rates. But I expected more. At least it can now be locked at a stable 30 FPS. To gain even more performance, turning on DLSS quality further increases performance to a significant degree. To the point where we are now being CPU bottlenecked most of the time and we are averaging over 60 FPS with this setup. This indicates that this game, well, it's obviously very demanding, but it can scale down quite a bit, especially on the CPU side. It's great to see such lower end budget CPUs capable of targeting a mostly stable 60 FPS. One thing I would like to point out is that this game, across all settings, eats VRAM without care, as even with the optimized settings using DLSS quality, the VRAM usage can hover over 11 GB, nearing the 12 GB VRAM cap of the RTX 3060, which might indicate why there can be slowdowns during gameplay. 